Chemotherapy-induced thrombocytopenia is fairly common, and when it happens, of course, you can end up with a delay or a dose reduction, and that is certainly not good. We are here to discuss the first prospective trial showing correction or prevention of recurrence of CIT, and to do that, I'm with Dr. Gerald Soff, who is uh, Chief of the Hematology Service and the Co-Director of the Hematology Oncology Fellowship at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Now, this is a big issue. So, uh, this is a drug that most people are familiar with, correct? That's most hematologists are familiar with it, absolutely. So, what are we talking about in this setting? So, remiplostim is the a thrombopoietin receptor agonist, and what that means is it boosts platelet production. It's widely used around the world. It's already FDA approved, and in most countries it's widely used to treat immune thrombocytopenic purpura, or ITP. So most hematologists or hematology oncology doctors would be familiar with remiplostim. What we're doing here is we're using it for a new indication. As you said a second ago, chemotherapy-induced thrombocytopenia, or CIT, is a very common complication in cancer patients. In some studies, up to 37% of patients who are receiving chemotherapy require dose reduction or dose delay due to CIT. So what we've done now is we've taken remiplostim and we've demonstrated in a prospective randomized study that it's safe, effective to both correct the thrombocytopenia and to prevent recurrence of CIT when the patients resume chemotherapy. Now, this is a phase two study. It's a phase two study. So we only treated patients who were already demonstrated to have chemotherapy dose reduction or dose delay. This was not a prophylactic study. Right. We identified patients who had had a month or more of thrombocytopenia, had required dose reduction or dose delay, and were unable to resume chemotherapy at full dose on, t on time. Now, in terms of the, the design and the methods for this trial, what did you do? It's a very simple randomized study, open label study, and we randomized two to one for remiplostim versus observation control. And the patients, um, um, the primary endpoint, I should say, was correcting the platelet count within three weeks. We did an interim analysis when eight observation patients were enrolled, and only one of those patients corrected her platelet count. The other seven did not and 14 out of the 15 treated patients, remiplostim treated patients, corrected their platelet counts. Further, there was a significant, well, there was a notable difference in platelet transfusion requirements during that three-week period. And at that point, since statistics were so strong, we dropped the observation arm with agreement and approval of the IRB. The rest of the patients received remiplostim uh, up front. And our final statistics was about 85% of the remiplostim treated patients corrected their platelets within three weeks versus uh, only one of eight in the observation arm. And the numbers when you look at the um, uh, patients who didn't on intention should treat, I should say it was 85%. When you looked at the patients who failed to correct, uh, three out of the five had other reasons. There were protocol violations, one never even completed the three weeks. So about 94% of the patients were treated on protocol, correct their platelet counts. That's pretty impressive. Now, your secondary endpoint included safety and resumption of chemotherapy without the CIT recurrence. What happened in that? So we were very pleased there as well. 25 of the treated patients resumed chemotherapy with remiplostim support. Only one of those patients had a recurrence at any point of CIT. So some of these patients, the minimum was two cycles of chemotherapy. A number of the patients um, have been on treatment for well over a year. One of the patients I talked about in my talk is almost three years. And this is a patient with metastatic colorectal cancer, heavily pretreated for several years prior to enrollment in the study. So we're seeing what we believe is a durable benefit to the patients. From safety point of view, there were four thromboses in 39 treated patients, which is 10.3%. One had a symptomatic PE, one had an incidental PE, and two had calf clots. And again, 10.3% in patients with metastatic cancer That's on chemotherapy is within the expected range, exactly. So where does this leave us? I mean, this is a, an approved drug with some really powerful effects here. So it's a great question. I think there's two critical questions to move forward. Number one is this was a phase two study, right. single institution. Um, I'm now in the process of working with the sponsor uh, to design an open phase three 
randomized placebo-controlled studies with the primary goal of being not just correcting platelet counts, but maintaining platelet counts with resumption of chemotherapy. And the goal then would be to, to um, validate this sufficiently for a new indication and also for oncologists to feel comfortable using this going forward. Uh, the second thing we're hoping to prove, and this is going to be uh, a, a strong task, an important task, is to demonstrate that there's a value to maintaining full dose chemotherapy on schedule. One would assume there is, right? right? One would assume that if you can treat with 100% dosing versus 60% dosing, there's a value to the patient. But we actually have to demonstrate that prospectively. And that's, I think, the ultimate goal, is to not just get more chemotherapy into patients, but to demonstrate clearly, statistically valid fashion that the patients benefit from that. So you have to be happy where you're at at the present time. I couldn't be happier. And uh, how long is it going to take you to get this all together? Well, my goal is, I, and I've been working with the sponsor, to design uh, upcoming phase three studies for solid tumor patients. We're also going to be looking at post-auto transplant patients, and we're going to be looking at lymphoma and myeloma patients. Um, my goal is to have these studies open in 2018, and depending upon the study design and recruitment, I think we should have these the last in in some of these prospective studies in about two years, and the last out would be two and a half to three years. So I think we're not that far away from addressing what I consider the almost the holy grail in, um, in supportive care. We can fix neutropenia with uh, GCSF, we can fix anemia with transfusions, but we've really had no good options for thrombocytopenia. And I think we have very clear signal that we're on the right path. Well, this is an exciting trial, so I'm, I'm hoping to chat with you again in a, in a couple of years and see where you're at. May we all be here and be well, and I'd be, yes, I'm, exactly. I'd be pleased to demonstrate the data for you.